So these are the six key things you know you need to know about selling a business. Um, now, uh, I often talk about buying businesses and we talk about all the structures around uh, buying businesses, but of course, one of the key things is selling businesses. In fact, I've often said, you don't make money running businesses, you make money when you sell them. Um, so how do you get to that position of having exited the business? Well, number one, you've got to be realistic. So, so many people have these pie in the sky ideas about what their business might be worth. A really good report that comes out every year is the bizbysell.com uh, report. In fact, if you just Google bizbysell.com report, I think you'll come across it. And they show, you know, price earnings ratios for small to medium sized owner managed uh, businesses. And you'll see from reading that, it makes some pretty sad reading actually, that, they're, that you're not going to get that. 10, 15, 20 times earnings that you perhaps think you're going to get. So, you know, have a read of that, get, get realistic, understand um, what the business is likely to actually sell for and, and go out with that in mind. Don't go out with some crazy pie in the sky uh, idea of what you're gonna sell the business for. Number two, be prepared to be flexible. Understand that headline price is one thing, but most deals are done using some kind of deal structure. So be prepared to come back with a deal structure, be prepared to be flexible on how the deal is positioned so that it creates a win-win for both the buyer and the seller. So many businesses I see that are for sale just have no idea that this even exists. I mean, brokers, I think, fill people with the idea that, hey, look, you're advertising your business for three million, someone's just gonna rock up and write you a check for three million. Never happens. So you always have to be ready for some kind of, uh, of deal structure to be put into place. Number three is you need a really good virtual data room. Now this sounds really glamorous, but actually all it is is like a Dropbox or a Google Docs where you would stick all of the relevant information that they would look for in a due diligence process. Really simple way to do this, just Google due diligence questionnaire. You'll find loads and loads of different ones on, uh, uh, on the internet, but they're all broadly uh, the same. Take one of those due diligence questionnaires and basically just go through it all line by line. They're normally broken down into sections. So each section could just be a folder in your Dropbox and then within that folder just populate it with all the documents and the evidence and the backup information that you need to create that, uh, that data room. <clears throat> now this is a really important thing because this, this process can often delay a sale by, by a number of months. And you know, I've often used the expression that deals are like concrete, the longer you leave them the harder they get. So if you can provide all the information in a timely fashion, in a really easy way, you'll massively accelerate the opportunity to get a transaction uh, completed. So um, having your virtual data room ready is a really important part of the sale. It's going to really accelerate the process. It's also going to make you look really organized. You know that old expression, how you do anything is how you do everything? Well, that's kind of important. So uh, when people see how organized you are with a virtual data room, they'll just assume that the rest of the business is super organized as well. So it really does help, um, uh, help get things done. Number four, you need a really good information memorandum. Now the information memorandum is basically like the brochure for selling the business. So um, it's a little bit like a school project, you know, you've got competitor analysis, market analysis, you know, lots of, uh, you know, analysis of the ratios within the business and how you perform against your peers and all of those kind of things. But it's really important to have a good information memorandum. You normally have an executive summary, which is like a one page summary of the highlights of the business, but make sure you have a really good information memorandum. Um, and remember, highlight things like the future growth potential, any key customers that you have. If you've got some blue chip customers in there, people love to uh, read about those things. So, you know, really make sure that you're accentuating the, the real highlights of the business and the opportunities that exist in the, uh, in the industry. Number five, advertise multiple times. Now, if you register with a broker, they'll often charge you a sign-on fee for advertising your business. Actually, most of them just then advertise you on businessesforsale.com or bizbysell.com. Uh, or some of these other um, you know, online sort of portals for selling businesses. And then they filter the inquiries and pass them back to you as if they've, uh, they've sourced these, um, these buyers. So why don't you just do the same? These adverts are fairly low cost. I would always recommend putting multiple adverts on the same platform. Sometimes you'll find there's industries that are slightly different. Sometimes there's price points that you can play around with to get uh, more inquiries. So having multiple adverts with slightly different descriptions is always a good idea. And also if you're on bizbysell.com where it shows you how long you've been advertised for, it's quite often a good 
good idea to um, cancel the ads and then just pay again and go again. That tends to email the ad out to a load of people saying, oh, a new business has just been listed in the industry that you're interested in. Um, so it gets you to the top of people's inbox and yeah, it just helps drive a load more inquiries. These, these adverts are not expensive, like $50 or something like this. So yeah, it's well, the juice is worth the squeeze um, to cancel them and just pay again and, and go, for, uh, go for a new ad. And then number six, I can't emphasize how important this is. You need to remove the obstacles to sale. You wouldn't believe, I mean, I, I always use the Amazon example, you know, where you perhaps go onto another website, not Amazon, you know, uh, to go and buy something and you click to buy it and it says, oh, you have to have an account before you can buy this. So then it says, you know, give us a username and you type in your username and they go, no, no, you can't have that username. You have to have another username. So you try another one. It goes, no, you can't have that one either. You can have Jeremy 6493712 hash or something like this. Then it goes, now a password. Oh no, you can't have that password. It's got to have one capital letter, one exclamation mark, four numbers, three, and you're just like, oh, f fuck it, I'll buy it from Amazon, you know? And you go onto Amazon, you click and it's ordered and it's coming and it's just so simple. They've just removed all of these unnecessary obstacles to sale. It's exactly the same when you sell anything. It's the same when you're selling a company. Don't put the unreasonable things in the way. When you approach a broker sometimes, you know, you'll find first thing they want an NDA. Okay, then they want a proof of funds. Then they want to know which lawyer you're using. Then they want to know which accountant you're using. Then they want to know who's going to be doing the due diligence. And all of these things, and uh, you know, you haven't even looked at the business yet. All of these things are unnecessary obstacles that don't need to be covered in the first uh, conversation. So don't put these stupid obstacles in the way of, of engaging with a potential buyer or engaging with a potential transaction. Then when it actually gets to the transaction, look, the two key things that really slow a transaction down are due diligence and finance. So we've already covered that due diligence, you can uh, make sure you've got this virtual data room that's really up to date. So that will really accelerate that part of it. And having some kind of pre-approved finance or some vendor finance structure that you're willing to put into place will massively enhance your uh, opportunity for selling the business as well. And just think about all of the p potential obstacles that lie between you and a completed transaction and try and remove those from the pathway so that you create this path of least resistance from where you are now to having your business sold. So uh, that's it for my uh, six tips for selling your business. People always ask me, when should I sell my business? And I often say, look, the right time to sell your business is now. Um, you don't know what's around the corner. Um, often people give me reasons why they don't want to sell their business now, and I always think they're great reasons to sell your business now. You know, um, when you say, uh, oh, but next year is going to be my best year ever, buyer's going to love that. Um, and uh, by the way, every entrepreneur thinks that next year is going to be their best year ever. When you sell a business, you create capital and you get all your time back. So it's a really powerful thing. You don't make money running businesses, you make money when you sell businesses. So get to that point where you've sold a business, you've got your capital invested, it's generating you real passive income and you can create a fantastic lifestyle for you and your uh, family. So get that first exit under your belt. Good luck with that out there.